Just want to get this out there. Hmm. Sorry about this, guys. I don't know what's going on. My stream is having... I don't... Alrighty. Sorry about this. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to uh, fix this. And that it won't happen again. Anyway. Um, awesome. Okay, Marcy. Thank you. Um, so... Uh, that being said here... Um, vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. This is, it's almost a hormone, in fact. It's not really a vitamin because, I mean, it, it is, but it isn't. You can get it in, in your diet, but that's if it's added into most foods. Um, it's essentially manufactured by the body from cholesterol, by the way, uh, in the presence of UVB wavelength sunlight. Um, this is uh, ultraviolet light UVB. So uh, it's essential for so many different functions it's it's amazing um vitamin d however uh and this is important vitamin d is the most potentially harmful of all vitamins um one of the things that vitamin d actually does is it does have antioxidant potential and actually a great um, a large amount of the vitamin d that your body produces is then immediately destroyed by the sunlight that comes in instead of the cells that you know would otherwise be uh, destroyed by uh, the UVB light and so or by the sunlight and so uh, vitamin D does serve as a protective factor against a lot of different things and so it's very important uh, for cancer uh, and things like that especially uh, skin diseases but it, it goes beyond that right uh, it is essential for all sorts of things, from transporting calcium and magnesium to the bones to, um, oh, goodness, there's so many different things. Um, the issue is that it is the most potentially harmful of any vitamin to overdose on. Um, it, its uh, overdose is the most severe and the strongest, right? Uh, and so it's really important to, uh, to remember that. Uh, you don't want to overdose on vitamin D. However, you also don't want to have a deficiency in it. Vitamin D deficiency is pretty bad as well. Uh, it was a cause of disease, um, still is in some parts of the world, uh, known as rickets, uh, which is where you have, um, basically your bones just start to bend because, well, they're not getting calcium. And so they're not able to really support themselves, and so they kind of start warping. Uh, it's a very, very nasty thing, um, especially in children. And the solution, of course, is going out in the sun and getting some proper sunlight, if that's possible. It wasn't always in certain parts of the world. Um, but vitamin D is essential. And, of course, uh, it the amount of vitamin D you get depends on where you are, the color of your skin, uh, and also... Um, uh, the time of day, the time of year. There's a lot of factors. People who are light-skinned like me, you go out in the summertime for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you've got all the vitamin D you need for the day, right? Um, someone who, who, on the other hand, is really dark-skinned might take an hour, maybe more than that. Um, someone who's kind of in between, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Of course, you want to be careful. You don't want to sunburn. Sunburn is a factor. We've, you know, I think I've talked about this before. You don't want to get a sunburn at the same time. You also don't want to, how shall I say this? You don't want to get a sunburn, but you also don't want to not be in the sun, All right? The sun can be dangerous if you get too much of it, but that's the same thing it is that everything is. Water is the same way. You don't want too much water. You also don't want to avoid it entirely. Right? So it is essential that we get sunlight and uh, vitamin D. Vitamin E is found especially in plant oils. It's very, very important for skin health. And it is an, also an important antioxidant. Important note, by the way, uh, your skin cannot absorb vitamin E. And so uh, you just you, you can't do that. And so those lotions and things with and conditioners and soaps and things like that that have vitamin E in them, they don't actually benefit your skin really at all because your skin can't absorb it. So it's not really doing anything. Um, and so it's really, really important 
that we take a look at vitamin uh, that you know we get enough vitamin E in our diet. Thankfully, vitamin E is present in most plant oils, everything from olive oil to corn oil uh, and beyond. You know, it's 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 everywhere. Um, soy oil as well, soybean oil, vegetable oil. Uh, it's just it's everywhere. So vitamin E, we don't. I don't think there's even a known deficiency. Um, last I knew, there there was no known deficiency of vitamin E because it's just everywhere. It's it's almost impossible to not get. So uh, now overdose can be risky for people with cardiovascular disease. So it is important that you consider that. Um, so be mindful. Uh, on the other hand, you have and then you have vitamin K. Um, and let me just shrink myself down here so that you guys can see that. Uh, vitamin K is a uh, is found particularly in leafy greens and in legumes, so like uh, beans, lentils, peas, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, they're found. It's found primarily there. Um, there's several forms of it, but especially in leafy greens. It's very important for cardiovascular health, and it's also important for bone bone health. Overdose is risky in general, as it is with most um, most things. Overdose is generally something excuse me overdose is generally something you want to avoid uh, in um, uh, in in general you don't want to have too much of anything right. so those are the fat soluble vitamins very important to understand um, but they are also uh, generally pretty easy to get a hold of if you, ha if you have a healthy diet. Vitamin K, if you don't eat leafy greens, can be a little bit trickier, but if you eat a lot of lentils, for example, or a lot of legumes, you should be fine, but you should still eat your leafy greens. Now let's look at the water-soluble uh, vitamins. Again, if you have any questions or anything like that, please uh, feel free to uh, speak out at any point. I'll be more than happy to address any of your concerns. Uh, or questions or anything. Uh, water soluble vitamins. Vitamin C. This is probably a very, very, uh, this is a very famous one as well. Um, probably almost, if not more well known than, uh, well, probably uh, just about as well known as vitamin D. Uh, it is found in many, many fruits and vegetables, and it is essential for many body processes, including, yes, the immune system, which it's famous for. However, <coughs> Large amounts of vitamin C don't really change a whole lot. Um, and this flies in the face of... <coughs> excuse me. <sighs> I apologize. But this really does fly in the face of a lot of ideas and concepts that are out there regarding vitamin C. Now, that's not to say that vitamin C is not necessarily helpful when you're already sick. Uh, if you are needing an immune system, needing your immune system to be maintained, if it's, uh, if maybe you have something where there's more and more stress being placed upon it, if you've got a disease, vitamin C might very well be helpful because your body is needing more of it, right? So I'm not saying don't go and get more vitamin C. What I'm saying is you got to be careful because large amounts of vitamin C are largely unhelpful. You're very unlikely to overdose on vitamin C because it's water soluble. And so basically what happens is when you take, and I've seen people advocate for these uh, very high doses, or I've seen, I, and I know that there are people who advocate for even higher doses. Um, the nutraceutical companies, uh, their supplement companies, for example, that have the philosophy of using vitamins and minerals and things like that as pharmaceutical drugs or very similar to the way that you would. And in particular, vitamin C is uh, used, and they'll use up to 4 grams of vitamin C at a time, or 4,000 milligrams. That's a lot of vitamin C. That's a huge amount of vitamin C. And uh, most of that, virtually all of that, is just going to be excreted in the urine. Uh, in other words, when you buy a vitamin C supplement that you don't need, all you're buying is expensive pee. Okay, um, that's unfortunately the case. 
Um, now, again, if you need, uh, if you're in a state where you're needing extra vitamin C, if you have a deficiency, uh, something like that, then absolutely, and I would strongly encourage everyone, uh, especially if you've been particularly isolated or if you're in a, uh, an area of, of the world where, uh, or area of, yeah, area of the world or whatever country you're living in where uh, access to fresh produce is not widely available, um, then I would encourage you uh, to go out and get vitamin C, uh, provided that your doctor says that you would need it. But otherwise, the best source of vitamin C is fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, especially citrus fruits, and in particular, fruits in the rose family. These are apples, uh, in particular apples, raspberries, blackberries, plums, apricots, um, rose hips actually are the best. You might not be able to find those outside of a health food store or if you happen to find them on your own out in the wild or if you grow them yourself without pesticides and things like that. If it's, yeah, don't, don't go to some place where just some random roses and just pick the hips, right? Um, those are probably covered in pesticides. You don't want to do that. And again, that's one thing I do want to talk about at some point when I make videos is where to harvest herbs, where to wildcraft, and things like that, um, I, and kind of tips for that as well. Now, um, again, vitamin C, you don't really need a whole lot. I mean, obviously, you should get your recommended daily intake, but you don't need a whole lot more than that um, unless you have an excess burden on your system. But that's not every day, so you don't need to take huge amounts or have huge amounts in your diet. Um, however, vitamin C is very, very important because it helps fight off scurvy. Or scurvy, well, I wouldn't say it fights off scurvy, scurvy although it is, um, that's what it's named, ascorbic acid or ascorbic acid. It's, you know, ascorbic, you know, anti-scurvy. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, scurvy is just a deficiency in vitamin C. And one of the things that uh, vitamin C does do is it helps uh, maintain scar tissue. Scar tissue, believe it or not, is actually an active process. Uh, back oh, last year, uh, just all, it's almost been a year now, uh, I had to break up a dog fight. And um, I got a big old bite on my arm because I got in the middle of the dogs. And they were big dogs. And, um, you know, they just didn't like each other. They only bit me because I shoved my elbow in their mouth by instinct to separate them. Uh, and I have a big scar right where I got bit. Now, um, if I was to develop scurvy, the scar tissue would dissolve and that wound would open up again. Okay, Along with every other wound that I've ever had. Um, and so scurvy is a very nasty thing. You don't want to have scurvy. Um, and so... Lots of fresh fruits, lots of uh, lots of fresh vegetables. Uh, that'll give you all the vitamin C you need. Now, uh, the B vitamins, all except vitamin B12, can be found in a plant-based diet. Uh, this is a very common misconception uh, as well. Vitamin B12 is not made by animal foods. I want to make that clear. Vitamin B12 is not made by animals. It's made by bacteria in the digestive tract of animals. And, of course, they need it too, and so it's concentrated in their body tissues uh, and also in milk and in eggs, right? Because that's nutrients for the youth. Uh, you know, the youth. The new animals, right? And so uh, they need it as well. And so, you know, that's where, if you eat animal products, that's where it comes from. But vitamin B12 is not made by animals, okay? It, vitamin B12 is made by bacteria in the digestive tract. Some studies show that if you have a high, uh, high carbohydrate, high complex carbohydrate, low fat, low protein diet, you may not actually need vitamin B12 supplementation, but that's only some studies, okay? So I want to be clear. Do not just say, oh, I don't need vitamin B12. You do not want vitamin B12 deficiency. That is known as pernicious anemia. It is very nasty. Pernicious means very bad. I'll just put it that way. You don't want it. So 
and and B12 is found in a lot of foods. It's found in even even if you're vegan, right? Even if you're plant based, uh, over uh, B12 is found in all sorts of foods. It's found in everything from uh, plant milks to uh, breakfast cereals to nutritional yeast. Um, it's found all over the place. Um, and of course, it's also produced by you, bacteria in your own system, probiotic bacteria. So you do have that available as well. So just to be clear, it is important that you make sure that you have enough vitamin B12. Um, I would personally recommend if you do take a supplement, which that's the only one that I would recommend a supplement on semi-regularly, your body can store up to a year's supply. And so if there's any form, I would recommend a hydroxycobalamin, but if you cannot get that, then methylcobalamin is ideal. Uh, the kind that's found in most foods is cyanocobalamin, which is fine. Um, but if you're taking a supplement, then methylcobalamin or hydroxycobalamin, if you can find it. So uh, the hydroxycobalamin is very rare, right? But I would recommend that one because that's the least potentially harmful of all of them, at least from my understanding. Um, again... I'm not a I'm not a pharmacologist. I'm not a dietitian. Uh, I just know general things about health, and from what I understand, hydroxycobalamin is the most ideal. However, cyanocobalamin lasts a lot longer. It's more stable. That's why it's in uh, foods and uh, more often in supplemented foods, enriched foods, things like that. Uh, but there are other B vitamins besides vitamin B12. And by the way, interestingly enough. You know the people who develop vitamin B12 deficiencies more often? It's not vegans, actually. Believe it or not, it's meat eaters for some strange reason. Even though you're getting it in the food, for some reason, meat eaters have more deficiency in it. I don't understand that one, and I'm not sure a lot of people do, but for whatever reason, that's the case. So maybe it's because it's just in a lot of vegan foods. I don't know. But whatever the case may be, uh, vitamin B12 is essential. You don't want to avoid it, right? So, very important. Um, overdose is more likely with B vitamins than with vitamin vitamin C, but not a whole lot more. Basically, if you get a, if you use too much or if you consume too much, it's you know it goes through. Again, expensive urine. This is the particular. In particular, B vitamins are. How shall I say? They're they're used in the energy drinks and things like that. They're used in um, the five hour energy, sh you know, five hour energy little things. They're used in um, all sorts of things, including sports drinks and things like that, because they do have. And there are some benefits to that. There are some reasons for that. They are essential for a lot of cellular processes, but they don't give you energy. Okay, B vitamins don't give you energy. They may help your cells to be more efficient with the energy that they're using, but they don't give you energy. That comes from calories. You want energy, you eat. Okay, that's, you know, especially carbs. Okay, you want carbs, that's the main source of energy. You want to know more about that? Check out the uh, series on my YouTube channel uh, on the Restored uh, Health Acronym uh, and look at diet. It's the very last presentation in there. But if you want to know more about a healthy diet and about that sort of a thing, then check that out uh, if you want to know more about the macronutrients. Now, I want to get talking to minerals here because we want to keep going. Minerals. What are minerals? Well, vitamins are organic micronutrients. Minerals are non-organic micronutrients. Uh, so it's pretty simple. They're just, they, they aren't produced. They're just kind of... There, they come from the ground. They still are often, they're, ultimately they come through plants, but they're not produced by plants. They come from the ground, right? So they're called minerals, the same thing that come in the ground, right? Of course, there's a great many of these. Um, these are all drawn from the soil. Uh, and yes, plants are the best sources of these because the plants are the ones who are actually pulling them up out of the ground, okay? Um, that's just, the way things are. Plants are the best sources even of calcium and iron. People might say, well, but but milk is a great source of calcium. Well, maybe it isn't a bad source, I'll admit. Um, but where do you think the cow gets the calcium? 
Because a cow doesn't, you know, an adult cow that's making milk doesn't drink milk. So where does it get the calcium? From the grass. Okay. So the grass, the plant, is the source of calcium for the cow. Uh, and that's where that comes from for the meal. So, not for the milk. So, you know, it's the grass. That's, that's you know, it's the plants. And so calcium and iron uh, and all other minerals, plants are the best sources, bottom line. Um, now, there are too many minerals. There's minerals and there's trace minerals. So there's minerals that you need in relatively large amounts. And then there's minerals that you need in really tiny amounts. There's far too many to go over. But we'll just go over a couple. We'll go over calcium and iron. Because there, there are the most uh, misconceptions about these particular minerals. Uh, calcium, to start with, is essential for bone health and also for many other bodily processes. Um, and this is well known. Um, uh, milk is a decent source of calcium. Notice I say decent. It's not the best source. Sure, it has a lot of calcium numbers wise, but the calcium in milk is actually not as bioavailable as in many plant-based sources. Now, why is this the case? Well, there's a couple reasons, but um, in particular, a high protein diet has been shown to be very harmful to calcium levels. When you eat a high protein diet, for some reason or other, it causes more calcium to be, uh, to be excreted in the urine. Now, there's a lot of theories about this one in particular that's gained a lot of traction. I don't know how, I don't, I don't know for sure if this is the case, but that protein, because protein is broken down into amino acids and some of those amino acids have phosphate, or all amino acids have phosphates, but um, phosphates in particular need to be excreted uh, because they make the body acidic. And so when you take those, uh, you take that acid, and uh, how do you get rid of it? Well, you got to neutralize it and get it out of there. How do you neutralize it? With a base, right? Baking soda and vinegar. In order to make it neutral pH, you got to add, you know, vinegar is an acid, right? In order to make it neutral pH, you got to add baking soda. And so what do you do? You add baking soda or in this case, uh, well, actually baking soda, believe it or not, sodium bicarbonate is your body's go-to. But if it runs out of sodium bicarbonate, which it might if you're eating a high protein diet, it's going to turn to the next best thing, calcium carbonate or calcium bicarbonate. And so what, you know, calcium carbonate. And so what's going to happen? Well, the calcium is going to be drawn from the bloodstream and then eventually from the bones. Uh, and then uh, the kidneys are going to excrete all that extra protein and all those amino acids. And so it is very, very important to have actually a low protein diet. And sources of, now, now there are, I will say that there are plants that are not great sources of calcium, even if they have relatively high calcium levels. For example, lamb's quarters is a, an amazing source of calcium numbers wise. It has more than twice. Now listen to this guys. It has more than twice the amount of calcium in a cup of milk, okay? But it's not, but not all of that is available either, okay? Lamb's quarters is a particular kind of vegetable that's in the buckwheat family, I believe, and the, uh, or the amaranth family. And the, uh, the thing with, uh, with, uh, lamb's quarters, it's also called goosefoot, canopodium album is its scientific name. Uh, even though it has ridiculously high level, in one serving, right, one serving of lamb's quarters, it contains 460 milligrams of calcium. That is almost half of the USDA's recommended dietary intake. Okay, so 460 milligrams in one serving of lamb's quarters, that is just about twice, it's a little over twice, I think. Um, the uh, average amount of calcium in a glass of milk. So it's got a lot of calcium in there, but it also contains high levels of a chemical called, well, of a chemical family called oxalates. And these bind the calcium and make it very difficult or impossible for your body to absorb it. So it's not all bioavailable either. So it's not just protein that's a big thing. There are other plants that do this. Spinach, uh, rhubarb, and uh, 
beet greens and things like that, those have high levels of oxalates. Um, uh, chocolate as well is very high in oxalates. So, and so um, it can actually cause problems with absorbing, absorbing calcium. Uh, dandelions, figs, and collard greens are very good sources of calcium. Uh, and of course, you've got other uh, plants as well. Uh, and, you know, lamb's quarters is a, is a pretty good source too. Uh, in fact, collard greens have uh, one and a half times the average amount of, uh, of uh, per serving of calcium uh, as a glass of milk. So collard greens are actually a better source, and they don't have oxalates, so it's actually way better for you to have collard greens than a glass of milk, uh, amounts-wise. Okay, so even though milk is not a terrible source, it's also not by any means the best source, and animal products are not the best source either. The best sources are the plants in the ground. Um, and so dandelions, figs, collard greens, those are excellent sources of calcium uh, you can find. And I mean, in fact, one serving of dried figs has a quarter of your da daily recommended intake. So, and that is just about as much as in a glass of milk, but it's actually all bioavailable, or most of it is. So, hey, that's pretty cool. All right. So we want to avoid a high protein diet. We also want to avoid a high oxalate diet. Right, so we don't eat a lot of rhubarb. We don't eat a lot of, uh, if you're a forager, right? Because I know there may be some foragers listening to me now. You want to avoid also high amounts of spinach and high amounts in particular of wood sorrel and uh, sour, uh, sour dock, right? Uh, you want to avoid those things in large amounts because they contain oxalates and that can cause problems for absorbing calcium. Uh, and actually can cause physical damage to the kidneys if you take if you eat too much of something that has a lot of it in it. So, uh, I'm not saying don't eat those things, just be very very wise about it. Okay. Now, what about iron? Well, iron is found in a great many root vegetables, leafy greens, and legumes. In particular, uh, yellow dock uh, is uh, a great source of iron. There are uh, and that one. Unfortunately, you won't be able to find it in most stores. If you're a forager, yellow dock, that's a great source of iron, but it's not the best source of iron. Um, leafy greens are also pretty good, and legumes are also a great sources of iron. Um, it is, however, especially high in blackstrap molasses. Uh, black, one tablespoon of blackstrap molasses contains 20% of your daily recommended intake of, uh, of iron. So, yeah, you want an iron supplement, there you go. Uh, now, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, iron is found in red meat, but now this is very interesting because it's kind of the opposite of calcium. You do not want to absorb all the iron. Okay, you don't, unless you're deficient, right? If you are deficient, then you are going to, you know, then maybe you do want to absorb a lot of iron. But you don't want to absorb a ton of iron if you don't need it. Um, and red meat, unfortunately, your body pretty much I mean, absorbs virtually all of the iron in there because it's heme iron or blood iron. Uh, it is a particular kind of iron that your body just absorbs. And so it's really, really important that you don't do that. Now, why is that the case? Because I thought you wanted to absorb more of a nutrient. Well, normally, yes. But iron is a pro-oxidant. You may have heard of an antioxidant. This is the opposite of that. An antioxidant helps prevent damage to uh, cells, to cellular DNA. A pro-oxidant increases that likelihood uh, and increases the risk of cancer uh, because it increases the risk of genetic damage to the cells, uh, and it, it's very dangerous. So too much iron increases the risk of cancer. It is a pro-oxidant. In other words, it rusts in the body. Okay, So you don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want too much iron because that's going to raise your risk of... You still need iron, but you don't want to have too much of it because if you have too much, it does raise your risk of cancer. This is very, very important. Um, now, there are ways that you can increase the... Uh, oh, I do want to say actually as well, eggs are also a very good source of iron. I believe they are also heme iron. Eggs are not 
as bad as meat. Okay, they're not as bad. They're still not ideal, but they're not as bad as meat. Okay, so when I speak against milk and eggs, I say that because they're not the ideal food. If you need something for some reason, or if there's some benefit that you can get out of them, fine. Okay, or if you can give up red meat and white meat, if you can give up flesh, but for some reason you just cannot bring yourself, or you, maybe you need it for certain months of the year, depending on the part of the world you're living in, then you do need to, you know, th then, you know, that's fine. But ideally, right, we want to get rid of these things. It's not always practical, right? So too much iron raises the risk of cancer. It's very, very important for us to know that. Vitamin C does help with uh, absorbing iron. So if you have an iron deficiency, well, first of all, if you have an iron deficiency, you need to find out why, because there's a lot of reasons why that could be. So get checked out by a doctor. But secondly, um, vitamin C helps absorption of iron. And so uh, if you do need to have uh, extra iron or if you do need you know, to absorb more iron, uh, if you're low or if you're, um, you're deficient, then you, you know, then vitamin C can help. And so pairing up, you know, say for example, uh, lemon juice, uh, lemon juice or lime juice with high iron foods, uh, that's a great way to do it. Uh, tomato sauce is also a great thing that you can use. Um, and uh, of course, with blackstrap molasses. That's pretty good too. So it, it you know, and, and the nice thing about plant iron, right, non-heme iron, is that your body absorbs what it needs, not too much, right? Um, so very important to note. Now, this is the part that I really wanted to get to because there's a lot of misunderstandings in particular about supplements. I'm not totally against supplementation. Okay, I want to get that out there first. I'm not totally against it. However, there are a lot of misunderstandings out there, and I really, really want to clarify some things. Um, I remember, um, and I may have told this story before, I remember uh, several years ago, I was invited to a, uh, to a, a man's home, uh, not by the man, but by somebody who had also been invited. Uh, I was invited as a counselor, if you will, uh, because they were wanted to get some, you know, they wanted to get my opinion on some things. And I didn't quite know what it was. I had maybe an idea that it had something to do with health, but I didn't know for sure. And I pull up to the house, right? And I'm walking in and I see, you know, the person who's invited me. Uh, and uh, I look in, the, I happen to glance in the window, uh, the, the blinds are open. And I see this big poster with a big supplement thing right on it, right? It's one of those pull-up things that, you know, uh, you know, collapsible banner type things. And I go, oh, okay, this should be interesting. Uh, and I, I will admit that my first thought was snake oil, okay? Uh, because a great many of these things are snake oil. N um, in other words, they're, they're hogwash. They don't work. Or even if they do work, they're not necessary, right? There's better ways to do it. And this man who came there. Now, he is, uh, I don't hold anything against him. Uh, he has very little, if any, knowledge of nutrition at all. Um, and he did not rely on scientific studies whatsoever. Um, he simply relied on what the company told him. It was one of those pyramid scheme type things, right? Where, oh, you know, you buy this and uh, you buy this from me and you start working for me and you'll, but you won't really be working for me. You'll be working for the company and you'll make your own money and you, you know, that sort of a thing. Um, I don't even remember the name of the company, nor would I give it even if I did, because I don't want to disparage any company uh, in particular, uh, except to say, you know, except just in general companies like this. I have been to many since then, uh, many of these pitches, and uh, even though I have never been particularly interested in, I've only been impressed by a company once, and that was where they didn't actually sell pills per se, they actually sold, po it was pretty much just pocketed smoothies, which... I was, I will admit, I was impressed on that. Still didn't buy into it, but I was impressed. But anyway, th at this particular pitch, right, this man is talking about, 
all these supplements and he's talking about how he wants to make money and you know basically it's it's the same pitch that you hear at every one of these things where oh you know I want to make money and I also want just you know to help people get healthy so supplements and um, you know for whatever it's worth right you know okay whatever and he talks about the benefits of this supplement and that supplement and things like that and I'm going okay all right and I look at the ingredients and none of them are terrible Right? None of them are bad, necessarily, but they're also not particularly helpful, um, at least in, the, in a lot of contexts. Um, there are better things that could have been done. In particular, one I remember he was talking about, sleep. And he said, oh, you know, I used to sleep eight hours a night and still be tired. And, um, oh, you know, I found this one supplement, right? And then I got this supplement, and, oh, I feel so much better. Later it came out he was going to sleep at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I thought, ah, well, there's a problem. If you go to bed four hours earlier and did all the work you were doing in that time and the four hours in the morning, the extra that you get, you'd actually have better sleep overall. Each hour of sleep before midnight counts as two hours afterward. So you really want to get those hours before midnight. Now... Um, you know, again, nothing was wrong with those supplements. Nothing was wrong with the, uh, the vitamins and the herbs and the things like that that were inside them. Um, there wasn't any caffeine. There wasn't anything like that to my knowledge. Maybe there was one that had caffeine or something with caffeine in it. I, there may have been now that I think about it. But other than that, there wasn't a whole lot wrong with them, but there were better solutions. And so, you know, the question really is, are supplements useful? And the answer is, well, yes and no. It depends. Um, for deficiencies or cases where the body has an increased need, absolutely they can be useful. Um, now, not always. If, if you've got a deficiency, then absolutely take a supplement, especially if your doctor recommends it. Um, but if you just have an increased need, well, I would personally say, just eat more foods that have those. You know, if you need extra vitamin C, then go get foods that have lots of vitamin C. If you need some B12, okay, maybe get a supplement or just get a food that has extra vitamin B12, right? Um, and so, you know, and there's other foods like that too, you know? So, um, for example, if you have depression, vitamin B6 has been shown to be very, very, very helpful uh, in depression and anxiety. But having a supplement of that is not as good as if you have it straight from the source, right? And so if you have a straight-up deficiency, a supplement might be better, right? But if you have an increased need, maybe a supplement's better, you know, in some cases. But generally speaking, a, you, I would rather you just get it from the source, the direct source, uh, the, the food. Um, in fact, oh, I remember another thing about that. One of the things that this man said in this investment pitch, right, was when it comes to supplements, there are two kinds of people in this world, those who take supplements and those that should. And, oh man, it took all of my self-control to not just either laugh or say, hey, wait a minute, hang on, are you sure about that? Because I knew there wouldn't be, you know, I wasn't going to be able to convince him. I wasn't there to, to convince him. I was there to eventually, you know, just to kind of listen and then give my perspective on it. I later told them, uh, the person who uh, was talking with me, I told him, look, don't do this. It's not, it's not necessary. Um, there are better solutions for this. But um, that idea of there being two kinds of people of, in regarding supplements, those who take supplements and those that should... That's absolute hogwash. You don't, uh, there are two kinds of people, those who need supplements and those who don't. And by and large, most people belong to the those who don't category. There are exceptions, but most people don't belong to that. Okay. Um, other one, you know, if you have a deficiency or you have a situation where your body has an increased need, then absolutely, but otherwise you don't need that. Unnecessary amounts of water-soluble micronutrients are just excreted in the urine and don't do anything for the body. Again, expensive pee. That's all you're paying for when you buy those supplements. So you don't really want that. And, of course, unnecessary amounts of fat-soluble micronutrients can be potentially harmful because they build up in your body. So, you know, if you have a vitamin D deficiency, that's one thing. 
But if you're just taking vitamin D every day, even if you don't have a, a deficiency, and you, especially if you're light-skinned and you live in a sunny environment, you might overdose. You don't want to do that, so you got to be careful. Now, again, if you've been counseled by your doctor to do it, do it. Okay, I'm not counteracting that. But if you, you know, but I'm just speaking in general now. If you were just doing vitamin D or any vitamin or supplement just because, oh, well, it's supposed to be good for something, then you're doing something unnecessary. You're putting your body under stress, believe it or not, and may actually be harming your body by giving it too much of something. Overdoses on vitamins and minerals are just as real as overdoses on drugs. Sometimes they're not very harmful, as in the case of vitamin A and beta carotene. You know, it may color your face a little bit, but otherwise you'll be fine. But vitamin D can kill you if you get too much of it. So you want to be careful. I'm not saying don't supplement, especially not if your doctor tells you, especially if your doctor tells you, then do it. But if you don't need it, then you probably, you know, if, if, it, if you haven't been told that you need to do it, and if, you, you know, if you're just doing it for just because, oh, well, it's supposed to be good for something, well, you probably don't need it, and it's, you may be causing potential harm to your body, so you want to be wise about that. Um, a balanced diet and a healthy lifestyle is far, far, far better for your health than any supplement. Um, exercise is perhaps the greatest energy booster, um, along with a cold shower, right? Um, now, I'm not again, you know, if you, you know, I'm not totally against these things. I just want to offer advice and clear up misconceptions. And I also shrank myself a little too much. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that y'all could see that. So you, uh, a balanced diet is super important. And that's really the best thing you can do. Um, if you're feeling tired, and you know you're going to sleep late at night after midnight then yeah go to bed earlier um, before taking a supplement that's supposed to help you sleep better even if that supplement doesn't have anything wrong in it you know the supplement that he was talking about this man was talking about uh, in his investment pitch um, you know it had melatonin which is a good thing it had chamomile and uh, passion flower I think and you know, a couple others not bad. I mean, it didn't have opium in it, for goodness sake. Uh, you know, that would have been really bad if it did. Uh, it didn't have poppy seeds or anything. Um, but, you know, it wasn't necessary. And it cost 50 bucks a month. So, you know, why spend $50 a month when just, you know, go to bed a couple hours earlier and then do the stuff you were doing before in the early morning hours? So, you know, it may take some time to get used to, certainly, and it takes some effort, but it is better for you overall. Um, and I, it's just, it's, it's so important that we realize that. Um, and this is the time now, uh, as, uh, you know, we're kind of, we're, you know, I'm finished with the presentation here. There's no more slides. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and start typing them now as I continue talking uh, or comments or anything like that. Uh, that sort of a thing. Now, um, I do want to say that herbs and hydrotherapy and other things are great supplements for lifestyle changes. And sometimes you do need dietary supplements. You do need, you know, mineral supplements, vitamin supplements, things like that. Those are fine if you need them, if you have a deficiency. Um, they aren't necessarily always harmful, and they're certainly better in many cases than a lot of drug medications that are existing out there. So it is, you know, so that is true, but you do still want to be careful. And so, you know, with all of that in mind, um, you know, it is far better to seek out uh, lifestyle changes and then some herbs and uh, an overall healthy lifestyle, uh, healthy diet, balanced diet. Um, it's, it's just so important. I remember there was one study that was done. Uh, that on vitamin E and vitamin K uh, supplements versus, I think it was kale, uh, kale leaves. And they found that uh, the, the supplement was far less effective at what it was supposed to do than the uh, actual leaf of kale, right? 
And the reason was, be well, the kale, I think, contains something like 100 grams or 100 units of vitamin E and, or no, yeah, something like that, and then like 90 units of vitamin K. The supplement was like 1,100 units of vitamin E and 900 units of vitamin K. Guess what? The supplement did worse. Why? Because there's a lot more packed into a leaf of kale than just those two chemicals, right? You have other chemicals as well. You have other nutrients, right? You've got calories in there. Uh, you've also got other non-nutrient chemicals in there called phytochemicals that do other things as well. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's important to recognize that these things are not, uh, not as effective as a healthy diet. Uh, but at the same time, if you need them for a deficiency, okay, you know, then do that. Okay, I'm not, not speaking against, uh, you know, any medical counsel. Um, and if you think you have a deficiency, go to a doctor, get a blood test, something like that, because that is important. Um, now, again, herbs are, herbs are very useful. Uh, I use them myself. I make my own herbal preparations. I'm an herbalist. So, you know, I, I use them as well. Um, and I've ta I have talked about herbal supplements and things like that in, uh, in other videos. So if you want to check those out, then please do. Uh, at I am the King's Bard. You can find me on Facebook and YouTube and on Twitch. Again, the King's Bard. Let me see if I can actually uh, go back here and, and uh, actually get the beginning of the presentation so that you guys can see that. Uh, but anyway, okay, so I am the King's Bard. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and on, uh, and on Twitch. Um, so if you want to know more about health, about lifestyle, about nutrition, about uh, all sorts of things, then please do check me out on my channel. Uh, I would be, uh, and if you need any information, any advice, anything like that, obviously please keep in mind I am a, uh, you know, uh, I am, not a particularly, you know, I'm not a medical professional. Uh, um, I am in training to become one, but I'm not one at the moment, not officially. Um, I do have a lot of knowledge. I do have a lot of different things, uh, you know, a lot of things in my repertoire, but I'm not uh, the, you know, I'm not a medical professional. I cannot give medical advice. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to do that in the United States. I am working on a degree in Europe. So hopefully, I'll be able to do something like that in the future. But for now, I'm just a, you know, neighborhood herbalist kind of a thing. Um, so, you know, please do keep that in mind. Uh, but if you have questions about herbs, diet, lifestyle, anything like that, I would love to help you out with that. Or, you know, I mean, if you want to chat history, you want to chat music, you want to chat anything like that, contact me as well. I am also interested in a lot of those things, in, in all those things. And... My channel actually does also have some of that as well. I'm going to be putting more stuff up. Uh, and Swiss R, I do see you in there. Thank you very much. And um, Marcy, uh, I'm very glad that you learned uh, a lot tonight. It's, uh, it's, I'm really glad. Uh, I can only hope that I can impart something um, to, uh, to those of you who are here. Um, now, that being said, uh, it is 8.10 my time. I don't know what time it is in other parts of the world. Uh, for you, Swiss R, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what time it is. It's shown up as blue. The writing doesn't, oh, doesn't stay the same color. It's shown up as blue for me. So uh, it's hard for me to see against the dark gray background. <laughs> or, well, the kind of blue gray background. But I believe that's, that's you, Swiss R. So I don't know what time. Oh, it's 5 a.m. over there. Okay. Um... So, that's good at least. Um, so, it's early morning for you. Uh, so, that's awesome. Glad to, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, and uh, really glad that you guys were... Uh, I hope you guys were blessed and, and learned something from this. Now, uh, we do want to close out here. So, that being said, um, if you... If, oh, if you're watching the recorded video, the recorded stream, leave questions and comments in the chat. Uh, I want, or in the in the comment section. Um, ooh, herbs for pain. You know what? Um, tell you what, Marcy. M message me after I hang up here. Or hang up. <laughs> after I close the stream, after I finish the stream, message me, uh, and I can talk to you more uh, about that in particular. 
um, because there's a lot of specifics that need to be undergone there, um, and there's there's lots of things that can go into that. But yes, I'm I can uh, do my best to offer you some uh, advice and recommendations on that. Alrighty. Um, that being said, um, I do remember, by the way, that this next week is the last week that I'm going to be doing uh, streams this way. I'm going to, you know, the schedule's going to change. Uh, things are going to be different. I'm hoping that I will be able to do some things. I might keep Mondays, but I might do something different on Mondays. I might change things. So uh, I'm not exactly sure. I'll finalize that by this week. So by this weekend. So please do remember that this next week is especially the Sabbath, the Saturday. I'm not going to be streaming uh, after this next Saturday, this next Sabbath. So please do keep that in mind. All right. That being said, now let's not delay any longer. Let's go ahead and close out uh, and have, uh, with a word of prayer. And I'll see you guys this Sabbath for our last presentation on the sanctuary. Hope you join us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy for tonight as well, uh, for another day that you've granted to us, and uh, also for the advice and the wisdom that you've given us uh, and the principles of health that you have blessed us with. I just ask, Lord, that you would please be with us and stay with us now as we go our separate ways, that you would keep us, Lord, throughout the night or throughout the day, depending on where we are, and that above all else, you would be lifted up and glorified. Thank you so much again for everything that you have done, and especially for Jesus and uh, for him and what he's done on the cross. Thank you again. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. And amen. All righty. Thank you very much, everybody. I will see you guys this Sabbath, this Saturday, at 10 o'clock for our sacred history, our last sacred history. Don't miss it.